that makes sense. But I don't know. That would be kind of crazy. Not that crazy, but maybe a little too crazy for Thunder Predator. We'll see. Now, Jenkins, I have to ask you because, you know, we've talked about the fact that the meta is shifting even more to these heroes that are very active early on, that brawl. Um, it feels like Valve wants to tilt away from that, but are we going to see like heroes start to be adjusted to more fighting early? Because I feel like it's been a long time since we've seen some of these later game heroes show up at all. I think so. I mean, I think so. With with how uh, the meta is looking in, from ESL and, and also looking at this tournament, like it, it really seems like fighting is still king so it's gonna it's gonna really take somebody somebody special some top center somebody to to stir things up but we can see that he's fighting as well right now so it's like everybody's just everybody's just fighting so yeah i would i would say yes it's it, there's so probably like we don't, we don't see specters patch. really anymore no. you know anti-mage occasionally PAs, we do see yeah, but it's very, very very specific um yeah, yeah, it just feels like there's like a whole half of the hero pool that's just ignored nowadays because of the way that this has changed so much. It does seem like it. I mean, uh, definitely playing in these in these like uh, higher rated games, it's it's like people are calling you to come here and to go there, and mm -hmm. everybody. It's just fighting. It's just fighting nonstop. And I think I mentioned this before. Like people are still pushing out lanes and doing things like that and split pushing, but it's always so brief. It's like Nature's Prophet shows up in a lane, pushes for like a couple of seconds and then boom back to base like ready to fight you know it's never yeah. this like i'm gonna split push you for 10 20 minutes sort of thing it's like split push fight split push fight split push fight that's that's yeah. kind of how dota is right now and it seems like it's gotten worse after the patch um i, I mean i like it i enjoy it i find it very fun i'm, a, I'm an off lane player so i like you running, like brawling I, I like you like skirmishing yeah this is right, this is right. this is what i enjoy doing so uh, i'm okay with it but carry players maybe not so much storm spirit Okay, hmm. storm mid. Leo style storm. Definitely a good storm game. I mean, there's no real lockdown for him. There's like the pseudo lockdown of the void spirit Q. He's gonna need to get a Yules if he wants to actually catch the storm out. There's the Lich gaze, but these are these are all what I would consider like pseudo lockdowns. Lich, when Lich gets some levels, it's a pretty good lockdown. But it, I mean, this hero is a position five, so it takes like 15, 20 minutes before oh, Lich can start locking down storm. Right. Consistently, I should say. Yeah, not a bad pickup for sure on the side of Thunder Predator. And uh, definitely suiting Leo Style's play style. Uh, he likes to be very aggressive. I've seen him play absolutely like a madman sometimes in the mid lane. So how does this match up? I'm guessing Void Spirit still, if if it is indeed a, a mid Void Spirit, right? I feel like Void Spirit definitely wins that matchup, though. Uh, I feel like Storm wins the matchup. Because it's you You have like magic damage against Void Spirit. I mean, Oh, I'm flip-flopping it in my mind. Sorry. Yeah. Yep, both, because both of, of the... them. The spirits are weird because all of them can like push out the wave. So, worst case scenario, you just kind of go even. But I feel like Storm has some kill threat on Void. And Void has some kill threat on Storm. If there's any rotations, like the other one's going to die. Yeah, I had that mixed up because we keep talking about how, you know, Void Spirit, uh, you know, he blocks the physical damage, but magic stuff tends to be very good against him. Yeah. yeah. So, I just threw that out the window. Oh, well. <laughs> Let's see, they I was trying. The I was trying. I'm interested to see, like, they banned the DK. That means they think it might be a void offlane, or they could run some DK on, like, MSS. Five seconds but uh, we'll, we'll see. They have run the Void Spirit on the offlane. They did it versus Furia, actually. So that's highly possible. You know, if you Life wanted to be... Stealer. If you wanted to be truly cancer right now, you could, you could pick, like, Huskar or Broodmother mid, and it would... It would do really well in this game. I'm not sure how Cancer Quincy crew want to go. I I don't think I don't think Quinn plays either of those heroes. Like Quinn is such a uh, a purist in in pubs. Like he refuses to be like a Huskar spammer or a Brood spammer. Really? Yes. Oh my God! Is he ever a purist? He flames people. Where it's like, what's the point of doing that? That's not real Dota. Like going back to the thirty-year-old boomer meme. It's like, oh god! So he's like that one real... guy that like you get ganked mid. He's like one v one me, bro. Come uh, back no. when you, you know. No, I would say he probably sort of thing? he probably sees that as like real Dota, but not the That's not the like Dota. cancer last picks. Okay, so they Slardar just to counter the uh, the life stealer. Interesting, and they just run the void mid. We have not seen like hardly any life stealer or Slardar. Or Slardar, both. Or Slardar. Well, I mean, Slardar probably a reaction pick to the the life stealer, right? Making his lane very difficult. They're honestly both pretty garbage heroes. <laughs> Slardar's bash at level one 
it's like 50 damage down from something like 80. It feels really bad. Uh, Life Stealer been nerfed over and over. Oh god, it just both of these heroes are kind of rough. But it is a good lifestealer game. I mean, there's a bunch. It's just all magic damage on the side of Quincy mm-hmm. Crew, other than of course the Sarda, which was the last pick. And uh, lifestealer is a Phoenix Egg hitter, and it's, it's just a Sarda game too. Whenever there's a, a lifestealer, you know, you got the storm, you can lock down. There's a Beastmaster who you can kill through all of his auras uh, with the with the slaughter amplification. You've a gyro, you've a void. Like these heroes love having people amped. So it is actually a good game for both of these heroes, despite them being pretty trash. I think I like Quincy Cruz draft just a little bit more, though. Like, looking at everything here, like, there's a nice pickoff potential coming out from the side of Thunder Predator. Uh, I just... I just think it's much easier to see what Quincy Crew wants to do with their draft. And there is uh, something to be said about simplicity. I think it, one issue with the Thunder Predator draft is just, like, early game damage. They have a, a storm who wants to hit creeps they have a life stealer who wants to hit creeps then they have a grim stroke that doesn't feel like it's like supplementary <laughs> damage and then a Jakiro who is going to go probably two points in dual breath and max ice path so it's a little weird like a beastmaster has to have a really good game in order for the three to run around and have any kill threat unless they go some like life stealer armlet build which would be pretty interesting i mean i i have seen more and more people going for that as opposed to like going for like some radiance rush or or a big you know bigger item like that yeah, just something. being able to fight earlier. Yeah, that, something then, to be said. then you can infest the storm, and when he's like level twelve and has a Kaya, then you have some serious kill threat. But that is a that is a pretty late timing, and before that, there aren't really great infest targets. You can still go on storm, but storm is kind of garbage at fighting until until right. a little bit later. Like it really feels like his mana pool is an issue in this patch until you get the bloodstone. Then the hero feels insane because new bloodstone is just great for storm. I mean, we talked about that too with Briel, uh, when he was playing the the storm. Was it the other day? Yeah, I believe he, he like went to a lane, killed, and then totally out of mana, and he just walks back to base, and it's like, oh, okay, that felt pretty bad. Yeah, but he still was able to do quite a bit of work with it. So it is possible that you know Leo Star will find these openings. Um, but I do think that the Void Spirit is a hero that it's a little bit easier for him to be very active early on. He doesn't it's want to sit there easier. in the lane necessarily yeah. and just continuously hit creeps because, you know, I yeah, agree. it's nice if he has a couple items, if he's able to, uh, you know, grab that Yules too, blink, whatever. But um, <laughs> he definitely can make more things happen with very little. Yeah, I totally agree. Void, oh, all Void needs level good. six and it costs him basically nothing to go to the lanes. It's like mm. the thing that you're mostly costing is Astral Step charges, which restore in 30 seconds. So pretty nice hero for for running around and being active and uh with like a slardar and a gyro in the side lanes too these are heroes that love when you're active around them so there's a there's a really nice snowball potential uh for the side of quincy crew for sure i think that's why i really do like their draft what they have going on here plus they also have you know the team fight having uh biver being able to you know throw out that egg and of course you know the gyrocopter i just feel like it's a very balanced draft whereas i look at thunder predators draft and i just it's a lot of very singular i I mean i guess with the grim stroke too right you've got the the capability to double up on a couple things but oh yeah they do have the storm grim stroke combo we've seen that one before that's a pretty nice one it, it makes that storm grip kind of feel like it's a team fight Your ultimate. Anger is All right. Here. Pretty annoying. A little bit like the uh, the this vortex the eggs. late game, but yeah. yeah definitely. Because usually with that, you're getting like two or three people anyway, so. But we'll see how it all pans out, you know? You never know. Sometimes you get a really good rune, you too. Die. That can change the course of the game. Yes, Sometimes you get really garbage neutral items. God. <laughs> If you get a regen rune on Storm in the first, like, 10 minutes of the game, your life is just set. You're just so good. You can just farm the entire jungle, regen up, and avoid, like, two or three fountain trips. It's really ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Rune control going to be very important in this game because Queen yeah, is almost... also going for a model. I guess they don't really have the greatest heroes to be able to do it, but I almost wonder if you try to uh, snipe the courier on Leo Stone, really just secure a nice lane for your Void Spirit, but... Maybe. Viper's in the uh, in the area. Maybe he goes for it. Although that's not a... Surprisingly, that's not a super common thing. I was trying to find that for a, a video the other day, and I could not find a mid lane courier snipe before the game. People really value... What about... Oh, before the game. I thought, I was like, we definitely watched Eternal Envy snipe, like, four oh, couriers that's different. on his No, that's back. different. I mean, like, a support... <laughs> like, the play where, like, a support sits there and then snipes the courier. 
No, th this is like bristle thing is just that the, the courier snipes the least important thing about that, that play. Is, yes. <laughs> it just happens. Yeah. They like I said, it's like you know a cat who falls asleep with his paw open and a mouse just walks on in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Some nice, uh, nice damage over here on MNZ. Nice and early here with the Phoenix. Can't do much about it right now. Trade here with the Jakiro a little bit. Two birds fighting in the sky. I feel like that. Jakiro would win that just because he does have another dragon. Yeah, but like Phoenix he's... is a, a firebird. Firebird, and... right, and that's an ice dragon that's extra. I don't know. But he melts ice. Something, something, what is his name? Todoroki from My Hero Academia? Yeah, Todoroki. <laughs> I've seen that one. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah, totally. Sounds good, man. You are, and SVG are just pushing Frank back. This has got to be so annoying, right? You're up against a gyrocopter. You've got, you know, SVG, who's got a couple of these mangoes, plus the clarities. He's just going to be spamming out the frost blast. He's going to lose his courier, though. And uh, you can feel that rage coming off of uh, SVG as they just nuke down Matthew. Man, is this going to be first blood? No, they've got a fairy fire. Okay, that was very close. Trying to get the block off, too, but Matthew was... Staying in a vision a good amount there. Dude, SVG is just so mad at Matthew. You killed my dog! Well, he's got enough regen on him, though, for mana, so... It's still gonna be able to be just as annoying. MSS having to TP away here in this top lane over back to his tower. See, this is the thing about this new... This new Slardar, is that... It's supposed to counter... Lifesteal, as I say that actually, they might kill him. As I say that, yeah. <laughs> they might kill him. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. He's gonna try to open wounds. Another bash comes out. And the tick. Okay. Five are getting the first blood, so uh, you're fired, Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a jinx. I jinxed it. Yeah, you did. You got the old caster curse there. Guess it's still good. I like that he started with Oov, because otherwise I don't think you pressure the Lifestealer at all. Like, we can see that Lifestealer has 11 CS to Slardar 7. So, if the lane doesn't pull back like that, and you get that kill, then Life Stealer just wins that lane. Somehow, just because Slardar's damage is so low now. But, with the Orb of Venom, the right clicks, the bash, the lane being this far back so they can chase... It's like, what can, what can a Jakiro do? With this uh, is happening. Definitely with no mana, he can't do anything. Exactly. exactly. He needs to uh, get some mana regen pretty quickly, and he's got it coming on the curry, he's got a couple of mangoes. But even then, like, you, you just have to be so careful with the spells that you're yeah. using and expending your mana with. Nice, uh, nice interruption here, coming out from the Phoenix. Life Stealer makes his way back to the line. This is an ugly top lane. Like, I just gotta say it. Like, all of these heroes are just ugly. You have, like, two birds, Quinn? and then two incredibly- Okay, there's more important thing happening. Sorry, they were just they were scrapping a little bit down here in the, the middle lane. And then we got the sexy guys on the mid lane. The Storm <laughs> and the Void Spirit. They're the sexy guys with the nice beards. I see you are into beards. Hey, what, you got a problem with that? No! Hey, man! You like what you like! They're brothers. How are you going to pick one brother over the other, man? Depends nice play there to get the uh, that creep in the back. Which one do you think is the eldest brother? Ember Spirit? No, Void Spirit. Look at his Void beard! Spirit? <laughs> that doesn't mean he's the oldest. It yes, just means it he can grow his facial hair the best. Yeah, and that, the older you get, the better facial hair you can grow. Uh, I don't think that's true. What would you know? You I don't know, have I don't have a beard! <laughs> you got me! Oh no! Leo style, we're seeing a little bit of that aggression, but not quite ready to uh, commit that hard to chase after Quinn. Get Ooh, he didn't. Oh, yeah, he got a, he, yeah, he got a solve. He's good. Top lane making Top moves lane on hero. MJZ again. A little bit of a swoop coming out here from Viver. As MSS, another hit comes off. This should be a dead Jakiro, but it could end up being a dead Viver as well. Nice stun, but he's taken down to that Jakiro dual breath, and he is going to get taken down. This is a very brawly lane up here, Top. Oh, yeah. Two guys that throw fire at each other, and then other guys who just hit each other. And then hope to God that their thing does more damage. 
Man, we need to like make you a Dota radio station with that kind of uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean that I could... kind of casting. You just nailed it right on the head. Yeah, monster energy if you wanna, you know, sponsor that. Get up your boy. I think I... uh I think Zayori might actually be pretty mad at you if you just took that idea. You know, he he was the one who started that. Frank is sitting very low right here. Just trying to focus him down. One more hit will do the trick. You are cleans up, gets a kill. Matthew now needs to run away and they just don't have the uh, the cancellation for that TP. So rather Doesn't than expend bother. it. Yeah, he had the frost blast there, but he wasn't going to do enough damage. It was just wasted some of the mana. But five minute runes are coming around. SVG is going to be able to snap that up. It's like MJZ stole one of the runes over here, but MSS is going to make him pay for it. Give him the old fish fingers. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the new move on Slardar seems pretty nice for the hero. Yeah, I mean, look at this. He's not just chasing down MJZ very slowly but cool. surely. Pops his health self. Eh, it doesn't matter. He finds the kill. Does have to be careful though, MNC. We do have a Slytherin uh, crush up I mean, and running. I think he can win this trade. I think they just gotta have the Phoenix over here. Yep. Alright, there's the rage coming out from MNC. Oh, look at MSS. He wants it. Bottom lane. They will lose SVG. But we'll Nobody's just regen healthy. back up again. MNC. Ooh, the bash, the sun ray. They need a little bit more damage. Nice sidestep here coming out from MSS. Who turns back around? This is uh, this is a rough play for Kotaro. And MSS, he does it. He pops that big charge, gets the kill, does eventually get taken down. But and what the hell happened in mid? Oh, they killed uh, this the typical five minute rotation to the mid lane. Both supports. And, who killed who first? Uh, uh, Quinn died first. Quinn died Quinn first. Died first. So Storm, Leo style, he's got a, he's level seven almost. Oh God, SVG with the big right clicks. Yeah, got a Frost Blast off, plus the double damage rune. Beaver, he is fine. Oh, he, I ticked it to the last tick. Oh last my God. Tick. He had his Tranquils too. That's so sad. Man, it is nice to go back to you. Hold that thought as they manage to take down SVG. Leo style, he's got the model. Quinn not going to be able to uh, go on after that. Does have his level 6. Level 7 now over on Storm. This is not how the games have been today. There's so much Oh, fighting. it's nice to go back to South American Dota, where you just see people scrapping nonstop. Oh, it's nice. I'm excited. I was tired. I was getting Resident Sleeper. I'm not going to lie. With all the farming going on, some of these other games that we've been watching. Granted, it is, of course, uh, you know, Quincy Crew that's being the biggest aggressor. I feel like in this top lane, making the moves on Kotaro, but... Oh, is, uh, the... the snipe. Oh, oh, get the item, get the item! Leo style! Is he gonna be able to grab him? Yeah, yeah, he picks it up, he drags back Quinn, he's gotta move though. There's an ink swell on him, but he's not gonna survive long enough. God, Quinn gets a good part of the stack too. That's really nice for him. Can you imagine if he got part of the stack and the item? Yeah, that would be sad. It's a broom handle too, that'd be a nice item. Yeah. I think that's why he, uh, he went back in. He's like, oh no, not my item. Nice ward. Whoever placed that ward is is genius. That is uh, an SVG ward if I've ever seen one. Mm -hmm. He likes to ward up the triangle. Oh, he oh, always wards the triangle. Chris Roar coming out. Leo style down in the bottom lane. Looking to make the moves on you are. We'll be able to find it. Chasing after SVG now. And again, not the greatest with the mana, but he's got the bottle. He's got the charges. And he's going to be able to take down <laughs> SVG. Top lane. Looks like they had a little bit of a skirmish. Ooh, trusty shovel. It is very hard to fight into a Jakiro. Even though you are a Slardar versus a Lifestealer, which is a counter, the support's always an issue for Slardar. It's always these like ranged, slow stunner. It's like some Lich or some Snapfire that, sure, you're supposed to win the lane, but the support just does enough to, to win the lane for the enemy team. He's so annoying on the hero. Let's get this rotation coming up to the top lane. MNZ has to rage up, run away. You are also in the vicinity now. It's gonna get spotted out by Matthew. I think if you're uh, if you're Thunder Predator, don't you just back off? You don't want to fight into this. Look at even Lich is making his way up here. You have a burb throwing fire at you. It's hiding in your trees. That feels bad. 
Yeah, look at that. MNZ TP's out. MSS, though, on the hunt for the Jakiro. I'm not sure why MJZ didn't just TP away. You know that they're gonna get aggressive. You know they're gonna chase you. Yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure why he stayed there. Maybe he was thinking he can get a six and then TP away, because he is very close. That is possible. I like the map moves, though, coming out from the side of, uh, of Quincy Crew right now. Look at this, we've also got a smoke. Should be able to go place down some vision. Maybe wrap around here as well. So you can see that Matthew's over here just trying to soak some XP. They do have the Ten minute runes coming through. Jump forward, though. They'll be able to snap up. And the jump forward here. They've got their eyes out. MJZ on the back lines. He's going to drop the macro pyre, but the rest of his team is going to just leave him the fry here. Chaos has such good vision in this area. I, I totally understand why they're like trying to play to this to this triangle. This ward has absolutely paid dividends. They do still have the egg as well. I'm surprised they haven't dewarded. Well, I guess they have. They just didn't get it. They just didn't predict where the where the ward was. It's just a nice yeah. uh, ward placement from SVG. He's so good at warding, actually. He's one of the one of the top people to look at if you're if you're trying to learn how to ward. He's always very creative with it. interested to see what item MSS goes for in this game because I know when Sardor was popular before it was like this Vlad's sort of run in and be tanky sort of thing but I, I can't help but feel that a blink would be pretty nice in this game I know they have Quinn to initiate just like he's doing right now in Leo style yeah but it'd be nice to have some more follow up here they're gonna try to turn it back around MSS though he's here they've got the ink swell they'll go and throw out the uh Oh, he Silence got him coming bottom. out, swoop coming through, nice egg being thrown out, but it's like right on the cliffside here. Matthew, he's not going to be able to take down. So the rest of Thunder forced to retreat. God, that was a perfect egg. Once again, playing around the vision. Like that, this is, it, it's, oh my god, you are taking the whole stack too. Oof. That is a nice stack to get. That was supposed to be for the Storm Spirit. Nice little present for uh, the Gyrocopter, for sure. Yeah, he's, he's stoked. And probably the best thing about that is not... I mean, the kill on Leo style is quite important. Uh, don't get me wrong. He is... He's the farm boy. But getting the Beastmaster to rotate out of bottom, he had free reign of the bot jungle. And now he needs to get back into there and get his control back. And that can sometimes be hard. So just pushing Beast out of an area is, is one of the nicest things can, that can happen. Because good lord, that hero can just take your tier 2 instantly. You forget he exists for a second and your tier 2 is dead. It feels like right now Thunder Predator is very responsive to what Quincy Crew is throwing at them. It doesn't feel like they're able to play the game that they necessarily want. Man, look at these visions. Look at this sword, like you said. Just keeping tabs on what Leo Style has, where he is. Does have a double damage bottled up. But I feel like Quincy Crew also, they play so tight. God, how like they, they, how, when, when does SVG get these wards up? I don't understand. What a legend. Looks like they're gonna bait MSS. It's gonna hit some creeps over here. The rest of the team, they're smoked up. They're looking for the wrap around here. Look at this. Love it. Love it. This is so good. This it looks like Thunder Predator, though. Be... They seem to kind of know. A dead Beastmaster. No, he's TPing out. They already... All right. Oh, oh look at Quinn. He knew so exactly close. where he was gonna hide. They won't be able to grab him. Now smoke up from Thunder. They want to catch somebody as they're moving into their own jungle here. Well, they know that they're split up, right? You see that several people have made their way top. MSS is just hanging. I don't think you want to go for MSS. I think he's a very tanky boy. Double damage gets picked up here, though. Or rather, activated by Leo style, so... It's such a slow hero taking towers, it is. though. It feels bad. And I feel like you've got to know, right? You just see Leo style hitting a tower by himself. Like, there's no way they fall for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's got to be obvious. They're just walking right on top of this ward here, too. MNZ is going for the armor build, so he is looking to to get active with this Leo style storm. Ooh, nice. Leo style, it doesn't matter. Quinn snaps it up. Now Leo style forced to run away. They'll drop the soul by, but nobody is close enough here to Quinn to make anything 
out of it. Other than SVG, who will eventually walk back in, but at that point, it's kind of a moot point. The fight is split now. Oh, Matthew good. is not looking good right now. Quinn will find himself a kill, though. Use the roar, but they're using it to run away. Frank, MJZ, and MNZ just trying to get out of here. Nice ice path will slow them down a little bit. MSS, though, still chasing after Frank. Viver, with the swoops, have their eyes on this beast mask. They've given up on everyone else. They just want to take down Frank down here in this bottom lane, and they'll be very successful. All the while, you are just like, good job, team. Getting up that triangle. Almost has his eggs. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, he's the top and network. He's a big boy. All he's got to do is hit creeps. He can show up occasionally if he wants to fight, but, you know, his team's doing so well, he doesn't really need to be there. They really are. This Sardar with Void Spirit, it's a, it's a nice combo. The, uh, the amplification on the Astral Step damage, it gives Void, like, that little bit of extra damage that he needs to kill somebody. Blade Mail picked Void's up. damage with the Blade Mail, plus 88. Like, he's doing 200 damage per hit at 15 minutes. What a hero. Yeah, that's a lot. That is indeed. I see why people like this item. Very efficient. Yeah, it's been heroes. showing up on uh, most of the the Spirit Brothers. Even Eternal Envy picked up the Blade Mail on the Storm Spirit the other day. <laughs> not <laughs> well, not sure about that one. I but... don't know about that one. Yeah, that's that's uh. You know, he saw his brothers getting a nice new coat, and he's like, "Me too. I want one." It's like, sir, yeah. you are too fat to wear that coat. Whoa, that's rude. Smoke broken by MSS, the perfect person to run into all this. As he turns his attention to MJZ, he's going to turn back around, though. Quinn, just so fast, being able to throw out that Aether Remnant, slowing them down. Leo Stell oops around a little bit, but no hard committal coming out from the side of Thunder Predator. They're just trying to make space here for MNZ, but I don't know. I think UR is going to be too much of a big boy by the time uh, Life Steely feels like he might be able to fight. Yeah, this this hero definitely when you when you have life stealer that's going an armlet build, uh, gyro is definitely gonna out farm outpace the, uh, yeah. the life stealer, especially because he he gets his aganim scepter now. So if he gets like a maelstrom, he's got the aganim scepter. He is gonna be running around and just absolutely mauling creeps. Whereas with this life stealer, it's pretty slow with armlet. I mean, it allows him to fight early, but it doesn't give him the same. The farm on the gyrocopter feels much better than the farm on the life stealer at this time with that particular build. I guess this is what I'm trying to say. This is question tier. Yeah. Is this really worth uh, Roche? Well, I mean, SVG alone is being able to just push it back a little bit, but they should be able to get this tower. Wow. Okay. That's an Making their way trade. over to the Roche pit. Zoom and real oh, spell. Snatches it. from the ages. What a god. As now the rest of Chaos, not only do they lose the tower here, they lose the Aegis, they lost part of the racks. Risky play, but it paid off for the side of Thunder Predator. Oh, I can't look. Good lord, Leo style with that Aegis snatch. God, he's on ping too. Did he get the kill? No, the Radiant got the kill. No, because he snatched it. He snatched My it, so God. Radiant still got it. Oh, getting the racks. I did not expect that to happen. Huh? A little bit of action down here as MNZ is trying to fight with MSS. Needs to be careful. There are plenty of other heroes on the side of Quincy Crew here. Leo Style, though, jumping in. He's got the Aegis X. Gonna go off on the back lines. So he'll get the Soul Bite off, holding MSS and SVG into place. Close to the silence. MNZ, though, he's just sitting very, very low. He's got to just back off. He's infested. He has to pop back out. It doesn't matter, Quinn. Oh my god. What's less the Sun Ray? Aegis is gonna get. Dropped. Matthew can't do second. anything to help him. He's just dragged right into the arms of UR and MSS gets the final hit. So, a good cheeky play coming out from Thunder Predator earlier on to get that Aegis, but Quincy Crew, they're mad. They're mad. They say, yeah. Yeah. we're not letting you get away with that. It's crazy that such a misstep from Quincy Crew, they still have such a lead and they still have such control over this game and confidence that they're able to just keep up the same pace as they had before. I, I can see a lot of a lot of worse teams tilting like mad after that happened. And like even if they're not tilting as in like flaming each other, they're still 
psychological damage. You're yeah. like maybe apathetic towards the game. Like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Are exactly. you serious? Exactly. That kind of, yeah, that kind of Right, which is a form, in, in my opinion, of tilt. It's just maybe not as toxic, dead. but it's something. Oh. He's really fun. This game is definitely getting harder for Thunder Predator to play, though. I just, I just think this gyrocopter is going to be able to do so much more than MNZ. Um, on Life Stealer, and that's no flame on Kokaro, of course, but I think it was well, just a better draft. One of them's a garbage hero, the other one is a garbage I... disposal hero, so. Let <laughs> me figure out which is which. Alright, we do get a roar, although Leo's down really far back over here. Very nice ice path, plus the macro pyre, but the heal coming out from Fivers. More than adequate. He's looking for the opening. He'd love to go and catch someone out here and knows that the roar is down. Sees M and Z over on the side. Spots Matthew. Grabs up the rune. It just feels like they're flexing right now. Like, yeah, this belongs to us. Oh, and a region rune for Quinn. That's always nice. That is fantastic. I need to play more Void Spirit. This hero is so much fun. I should learn Void Spirit. It's like a mix between Puck and like Ember Spirit. It's really fun. That's a nice pickup by UR. Manages to pick off Leo Styles Courier. Just look look how the like, Quit's not afraid of this at all. Just watches you know Thunder Predator walk by. Alright, cool. See you later guys. Be in your base soon. Taking your throne. Radiant structures are fortified. You are just chipping away. Chipping away. Quinn, the blade mails out, distracts Frank right back in again. Plus that uh, damage drop down though. Okay, Chain Frost gets used on the low ground. Leo Style looking to find this opening. Gets a couple bounces off of the creep wave, but they'll back off the SVG just dragging MNC and knows that his life is forfeit, but the back lines you can see the Frank. Oh, followed up with a nice link here coming out there's gonna be a buyback coming out from the lich they're able to take down fiverr and now they'll turn their attention take down mnc jz knows he's not long for this world does get taken down are they going for more mss looks like he wanted to go and uh follow up on it but no blink on the slardar so. yeah he's he's gone for the old slardar build the uh just like treads into some sort of defensive item vlads or, or pipe Makes them very tanky and difficult to take down, and it does. That's important. Yep. I mean, I understand when you have a void spirit. Sometimes you you feel like you just you don't need any more uh, catch on your team. And void spirit almost has his agonim scepter. In fact, I think he's sending it out on the courier right now. Oh, I hate ags. Like it's such a good thing on this hero, but I hate playing against it. I know. I mean, it's like if you get a yule scepter, it's not enough because he just pulses you when yeah. you come down. You need a BKB. It's so hard to deal with. It is actually so, especially as a support too. Like you're never going to, oh, yeah, to make course. it out from no. that. No never. way. Whoa. Oh boy. Oh, so close. <laughs> so close. Leo style. Very quick on the trigger there. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 9k net worth lead right now. 22 minutes in. Yawar went for like the safest, most boring build possible, but it's so it's so good this game because he's against a life stealer, which is traditionally considered a counter. But he just went eggs, BKB, butterfly. He is just not letting himself be countered this game. No, I mean this is a team that also you know recently uh, they did get let go. This is a roster that's looking to get picked up, so why would he go for something too risky? Like show that you're a stable player. That's way more important. Dead bread. He's got to get that money. He does. And oh, this is a great squad. Top tower. Okay. MSS, he's here. He's looking for this. Gonna just chase after him. The follow up from Quinn. A couple of these dashes. MNZ, that, uh, that armlet. Not gonna be enough. Not gonna be able to save you. Such a good Void Spirit Ags game against all three of the cores of Thunder Predator. There's nothing that they can do to take it off. Nope. And, and nothing that they're going to build that's going to take it off either. Like, if Lysler doesn't like building a BKB, a Manta with this build. Storm doesn't want to go for a Yules. What does Beastmaster get? He doesn't purge it with anything. Come on. No, BKB? It's just a very good Void Spear game, especially considering how far he snowballed. 7, 1, and 8 currently. He's got the Blade Mail. He's got the Ags. 
feels really good right now if you're Quinn. Yep, they just have total map control. Just one lane pushing out for the Dire, but... Only one hero can be down there farming. Everybody else is locked in base. And even then, like, you know, you usually think, okay, Storm Spirit, he's got, you know, this freedom, he's gonna be able to dodge away. But if they decide to turn their attention to Leo style, they can absolutely lock him down and just kill him. Yeah, I think Quinn, I think Quinn can solo kill him. Yeah. So as long as Quinn isn't showing, Leo style's gotta be really careful. He even scans. You can see that he scanned the high ground. Because he's so it's too risky. Smoke comes out. Yeah, they're going to they're going to pick Leo style off. Like this is the kind of new thing that teams do. Instead of just controlling an area and letting people farm, you go and you push the people out. You make Leo style TB home, and then you can kind of keep them in their base and play to farm. I don't think you even need to bring Viver down here. What's Viver doing? Oh, it's because it's rune time. That's why. Herp derp. Twenty five minute raids are up. They did expect they did expect that Leo style left and that he's like, he's just playing else. safe. But he's, in real, real reality, he's just a lot. Yep. Well, looks like there's going to be a fight breaking out, though. Very soon, the jump forward here from Quinn, dragging Frank back. They don't want to allow him to get that ultimate off. He's looking for the ward. We'll be able to land it over onto two, but... Looks like it only manages to connect over to SVG. Noir's just dumping out the damage. Ooh, I think Quinn's going to catch Leo's stall right now. Uh, that would appear to be the case. The silence, the astral step, it's making life real difficult for Leo style here. He's gonna have to zip out, and he is gonna make it out. Looks like, uh, MJZ not gonna be as lucky as he gets left behind, and there's a whole other fight breaking out over here by the Phoenix, as they find the kill on Viver. So it's just kind of all over the place. This bot lane is proving to be a bit of a pain in the ass for Chaos, or I should say Quincy Crew, as they're now called but mm -hmm. it's 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 not great that quinn has to head down there and deal with the leo style pushing i mean still uh, of course quincy crystal winning but this um potential to come back into the game comes completely from this bot lane of racks it's just annoying it's annoying to have to keep going back and dealing with um they did pick up the agnum scepter though on viver so these team fights are going to go a little bit nicer uh for the side of quincy crew the fact that they changed around the Ag Scepter, where you can actually Sunray. Oh, and with the Roche being up. Yeah, this is... <laughs> now, how do you prevent Leo style from running in again? Uh, you just time your stomp. You just have MSS there. And... Don't let him snatch it. I mean, he has no... He has no... Oh, he does have the Vision, actually. He does have the Vision. So maybe he will try to go for I don't know. I think it's a bit risky. It's a little risky. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just... they take it. They take the roach. They get the cheese. You are as a big boy. We'll be going after this bottom area, but already Viper's here. Takes those flame spirits, slows down the cardies with the, uh, the creeps. Run into MJZ and Frank, and uh, yeah, there's just a dead Leo style. Okay, cool. Inkswell's gonna get placed over here on MSS. Or rather, on the hero chasing after MSS. These boards are so annoying. Oh, they're slowing him down quite a bit. Quinn jumping forward though, finds Matthew, just cleans him up nice and easy like. Mal turns his attention over to MJZ, plus that frost shield, all the bubbles on Quinn. And that's a quick double kill for the Void Spirit. Another Blink Dagger Ember game. Huh. Ember? Or, uh, Void Spirit. Void Spirit. They're the same hero, come on. You just said they are the same here, currently. Well, they're like pretty much the same. Oh, MNZ. MNZ, he's running away. He runs right into Quinn. Quinn's trying to find this opening. Invest on the creep to jump forward immediately. He'll be able to just take down the creep. Follow up with that. Haul down Leo style. Jumping forward. MNZ, though, he's already dead. No buyback on the life stealer. Quincy crew just flexing their muscles as they walk right into this base and start chipping away on the tower. Yeah, I mean, they, they have the creeps, too, so I mean, the creeps are just mid lane. So they're, they're able to... to Except for this, like, this one little range creep running for his life. Yeah, he's not having a good time. No, he's got a but, wife and kids at home, man. He's trying. Trying to get home to them. Yeah, that's not the right direction to your base, buddy. No, it's not! I just feel like Quinn is becoming a Leo-style hunter, too, on top of this. It just feels like they're, they're hunting each other around the map. Yeah. He definitely can with these items. 
He is not afraid at all of dying. I mean, the only person that could kill him was Beastmaster, but Frank has been sitting in the base for about 10 uh, minutes now. That is too good. Can we talk about Yawar just totally by himself down here? No one's paying attention to him. They're just letting him hit the buildings. Quinn jumping forward again, drawing MJZ right back. Soulbind's gonna get used on MSS and Quinn, but they're moving together as a unit. Frost Shield gets thrown down too. And Yawar, again, Yawar's just doing whatever the heck he wants in the back lines. He doesn't care. He's watching his team fight. Sunrise just healing them up. They've already used the Soulbind. What do? Nothing. Nothing. They can't. You are just too big. Roar, but yeah, roar okay, they roar them, and that's Two. There's two waves pushing in, too, like this bot wave. So Storm can't just zip it out and make the back door kick it. Just, just look at you are. He doesn't care does not care. Goes to the back door. Zip 4 coming out from Leo style, and then immediately he's forced to back off. Just slowly winning the game. Yeah, this As is uh, a does very... Nothing. I mean, I, I hate to say that, you know, there's nothing that they can do, but there, there really feels like there's nothing that Thunder Predator can do right now. You are is just far too big. Quinn has snowballed out of control. MSS is just a big old beefy boy. He only not only does he have that pipe, he's got a crimson guard, and he's got the cheese. Okay, they, all right, this is the move. All right, be able to go. They uh, t get a pick off of MJZ. Leo style too. He was uh, being used as a vehicle. He's gonna explode, and now MNZ is left all alone. Although the buyback did come out, and the GG gets called. Yeah, they, I mean, they had to go for some rock rock play. Clearly, they were just slowly losing, but the the thing is, like, even if they even if they wrap around and they kill some some support, like if they kill SVG or something like that, or they kill the Viper, the other four heroes are enough to wipe Thunder Predator. So it's just a really awkward situation when you uh, when you end up in a game like that. I can't believe with how that Rax trade for Roche went, how uh, one sided that game seemed still. I mean, at yeah. first you had this moment of just like, okay, you know, they got a snatch on the Aegis, they were able to take these buildings, but it just didn't matter to Quincy crew. They just didn't care. They're like, okay, that's very unfortunate, but you know what? We've... Ugh. I just feel like they lost in the draft, to be really, like, really honest. And then uh, to top it off, like, Quincy crew just kind of styled on them. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if I think the draft is that much worse. I, I feel like Thunder Predator has pretty generic... Decent heroes. I mean, I think Life Stealer's garbage. It's a Life Stealer. I just don't think Life Stealer is able to keep up, especially because he had to go for you know more of a fighting build. But you are just had too free of a time, and he's a gyrocopter. True, but you know you can always have like one or two heroes that are maybe not so meta, and yeah. it's fine. Like I, I never, I would never want to blame the draft in, in this one because I really think that I think that Quincy Crew just like completely styled on them. Like they just played way better Dota. They were really quick at hunting them all the time. They were really solid at like taking the right fights you know like beaver would throw his little egg on some cliff somewhere and then the, that was very nice the thunder like predator him. couldn't get to it and all of a sudden it's like okay this was a good fight because he made the call that he can egg on the cliff and they're okay they're fighting around a high ground like there's just a lot of a lot more like high skill dota coming from from quincy crew for sure i mean the age of snatch was really cool don't get oh, yeah, it's wrong. always really it's cool. always super cool right to just get that timing just perfect and if you look at the uh the win percentage it it spiked downwards the moment that that happened and that that Rax play happened on the uh, uh what's it called the dota plus win percentage so you know that was something that was something there but um you know one moment of brilliance is not enough in a 31 no. minute game where basically quincy crew is styling on you for the rest of it i mean this this void spirit just went off like it just quinn made so much space on his void spirit that you are just had the entire free farm it felt like the entire time he could just do whatever he wanted. Um, and the rest of the team, again, this is one of those teams very similar to crazy, right? In the sense that they just, they play well together. They stick together. They move as a unit. They manage to spread out and still get the resources that they need while simultaneously protecting and taking good fights. And it just felt like Thunder Predator, they, they felt a bit lost, unfortunately. I feel like when Beastmaster left that bot area was when their map got really crappy and then it mm -hmm. never became good again. Other than like with that, 
with that like Brax push, which of course was Beastmaster being bottom again. Like the the you know one of the big things with this hero is the fact that he can make an area ultra dangerous, and he can do that completely on his own, which lets the rest of your team go somewhere else and get really farmed. So when you sacrifice that in order to show up to a fight, and then the fight doesn't go particularly well, well that's very bad. That's a mm -hmm. big that's a big risk for not very much reward. Uh, I mean, in that situation, it's just more than a risk because the risk didn't pay off. So I, I think that was like the big the big turning point for me, at least strategically speaking for Thunder Predator, is like when that beast leaves the bottom area and the fight goes like trash, it's it's hard to it's hard to recover from that against a team like Quincy Crew, who's, who's going to take advantage. We saw they immediately ran into the jungle and de-warded and warded uh, because they knew, okay, Beastmaster's out of this area. Like this is the time to 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 take back control all right well that was of course game number one here we do have another game coming up between quincy crew and thunder predator will thunder predator be able to shake this off and come back with fury or is quincy crew going to just tie this up neatly with a little ribbon and a bow and take it 2-0 we'll find out when we come back